Okay, so we're in Clear Lake today. Property is 1976. It's actually Tanya's house, and she invited us out to do a quick walk around because she was worried about finding some major issues on her house. But right now, she has some questions. Hi, everyone. I'm Tanya Legner. Um, I'm a realtor in the area. I called Chris because I read inspection reports all the time, and when it's your own house, you're like, oh my gosh, what should I actually focus on? What should I fix? So we're gonna go over some things that, um, as from an inspector's standpoint, like what I should address before I even put the home on the market. And so the very first thing we're gonna talk about are these anti-siphon devices on the outdoor faucets that I keep reading about inspection reports. Okay, Tanya, that was a really great question about anti-siphon devices. I know that's on every single one of my home inspection reports, mainly because they break all the time and people remove them. Anti-siphon devices are very cheap. They're at Home Depot. They sell them for about five to six dollars a piece and all you have to do is just screw them on. So that is not a major item. Hey Chris, thanks for talking about the anti-siphon device. The next thing I wanted to talk to you about was my staircase. I know the handrails are not built to code. I just wanted to get your opinion on it because I want to know if it's a deal killer. Okay, Tanya, you are correct about these stairways not meeting code. For this to meet code, your handrail would need to be continuous all the way up so someone would have something to hold on to for trip hazards. Your question is, is, is it a deal killer? And I would say no. This is not a deal killer. A good strategy would be is just to disclose it and let the homeowners worry about it because the, the homeowners, the home buyers worrying about it. The, because what happens is, is the home was built that way and it's grandfathered in and I think you'd be going above and beyond by taking on this job. Thanks Chris. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about are GFCIs. I read about them a lot on inspection reports. Are they really that big of a deal? All right, about the GFCIs, uh, is this a, a big job? I would say no, this is not. Do they need to be there? Yes, all kitchen needs to be GFCI for safety reasons. But when it comes to the size of the job, it's very short. Anyone with any type of electrical background can replace a GFCI in about 10 minutes, and they're about $40 a piece. So I would say this is not a big deal. That was super helpful. Now, after your quick walkthrough, what do you think I should be worried about? <laughs> okay, Tanya, for the final things that you want to be worried about whenever you put your house on the market is I always like to break it down to five major items. Your foundation, your roof, your plumbing, your HVAC, and your electrical. If you have those five items taken care of, you're normally going to be good and your process will move smoother. So I did find some stuff on your house. Let's go check it out. For the first item that I found on your property, you actually don't have kick out flashing right here and you have a fastener going through your step flashing. What this is, is it's a water penetration point and whenever you're going to have water going in behind your wall. So what you want to do is install some kick out flashing, get the fastener out and replace the step flashing right here and then you'll be good. Nice and watertight. Okay, so what you got right here is a Federal Pacific panel box. Federal Pacific panel boxes are a discontinued uh, electrical panel because what happened was is they went out of business and their, and their system is known to cause fires. I've talked about this in my other videos, but right here, pretty much if you have a Federal Pacific panel box, you know someone's going to come in or a home inspector's going to come in and they're going to call it out. So I already know, you've already told me you're taking the action of replacing this and that's huge uh, for selling your property. So let's go, let's go talk about the last. Last item. Okay, for your last find is on your water heater. What happened is, is your, you replaced your water heater, but your metal flue is touching the sheetrock. What, what this is, it's a fire hazard. All flues need a one inch clearance, and this is something that you want to address. It's an easy fix. You just get a sheetrock knife, and you cut the sheetrock off your, off your flue, and your house will be less likely to catch on fire. Okay, Tanya, you have a lot of stuff on your home that's what it sent like, but actually it's not that bad and I want to hit the positive things too. So on the positive side, uh, she has a brand new roof. She has a solid foundation, you know, there's no movement. Uh, I think y'all prepared that in the past too as well. Yes, yep. So that's good. Uh, you have a brand new water heater. A the AC is only eight years old. And then the final thing is, is you are going to replace the panel box, which is huge. You're adding a lot of value to that home buyer when they come in. Hey Chris, thanks for coming out. I really appreciate it. I'm getting ready to sell my own house and I really wanted to get ahead of these issues. So I called Chris out. We just did a quick walk through. I do not believe a seller should conceal anything. So now we can kind of slowly work on our to-do task. I definitely recommend sellers walking around your house inside and out and knock out some of those items on your list that you can do yourself. It'll shorten your inspection report. So I really appreciate it. Um, and I hope to see you soon. Yeah, and we'll go check out the next one.